All right. Good morning, everyone. We are officially starting John chapter 8, beginning verse 31 to 35. The heading on the page is, Who is your father? It, sound, it sounds like a, a bad title of a crummy afternoon show, but it isn't, right? Now when it comes to Jesus talking to the Pharisees, Jesus is going to make it pretty clear who he is, and people are not going to like it. Um, because their hearts are hard. We, uh, we'll have in verse 58 the phrase, I am. Uh, this was the name God gave himself in Exodus 3.14. Every Jew understood that Jesus calling himself the Lord Jehovah by calling himself I am. So, if you're, if you're looking for the, the mic drop moment, it's going to come in verse 58. Uh, Jesus is going to drop the mic there and tell them he is God. So, without further ado, John 8, beginning at 31. Let's see, should we break it into two sections? Yeah, let's... Do that maybe even maybe even three children of Abraham 31 to 41 volunteer Al and then 42 to 47 Wayne and I'll, and, I'll, and I'll take it to the end after that so Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him if you remain in my word, you are really my disciples. You will also know the truth, and the truth will set you free. We are Abraham's descendants, he answered, and we have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say you will be set free? Jesus answered, Amen, amen, I tell you, anyone who keeps committing sin is a slave to sin. But a slave does not remain in the family forever. A son does a son does remain forever. So if the son sets you free, you really will be free. I know you are Abraham's descendants, yet you are looking for a way to kill me. Because there is no place for my word in you, I am telling you what I have seen at the side of the Father. As for you, you do, you do what you have heard at the side of your Father. Our Father is Abraham, the answer. If you were Abraham's children, Jesus told them, you would do the works of, of Abraham. But now you are looking for a way to kill me, a man who has told you the truth which I heard at the sight of God. Abraham did not do this. You are doing the works of your father. <coughs> Is that okay? We are not born of sexual immorality, they said. We have one Father, God. Jesus replied, If God were your Father, you would love me, because I came from God and I am here. Indeed, I have not come on my own, but He sent me. Why do you not understand my message? It is because you are not able to listen to my word. You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to do your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning and did not remain standing in the truth because there is no truth in him. Whenever he lies, he speaks from what is his because he is a liar and the father of lying. But because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Who of you can convict me of sin? If I am telling the truth, why don't you believe me? Whoever belongs to God listens to what God says. The reason you do not listen is that you do not belong to God. The Jews answered him, Aren't we right in saying that you are a Samaritan and demon-possessed? I am not possessed by a demon, said Jesus, but I honor my father, and you dishonor me. I'm not seeking glory for myself, but 
There is one who seeks it. And he is the judge. I tell you the truth. If anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. At this, the Jews exclaimed, Now we know that you are demon-possessed. Abraham died, and so did the prophets. Yet you say that if anyone keeps your word, he will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham? He died, and so did the prophets. Who do you think you are? <coughs> Jesus replied, I glorify myself. My glory means nothing. My father, whom you claim as your God, is the one who glorifies me. Though you do not know him, I know him. If I said I didn't, did not, I would be a liar like you. But I do know him and keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced in the thought of seeing my day, and he saw it and was glad. You are not fifty years old, the Jews said to him, and you have seen Abraham? I tell you the truth, Jesus answered. Before Abraham was born, I am. At this they picked up stones to stone him. But Jesus hid himself, slipping away from the temple grounds. You know, as as I read that text a few times and was prepping today, I I kind of thought, isn't it Jesus' way of teaching people always like two steps ahead? Um you know, I I see Jesus always pushing people instead of spoon feeding them and, and holding their hand. You know, they're if they if they're at a if they're at level one in their in their textbook, Jesus starts to teach on level three and 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 he's like, you know, by faith you kinda need to catch up to me. Right? And and isn't that I don't know. I always think that's interesting to say, you know, when, when Jesus looks for faith, or when Jesus is growing faith, you know, he, he's, he's not he's not the type of teacher that says, I'll, I'll hold your hand on the uh, on a level, lesson one, and then we'll go slowly through lesson two. He, he wants you to say, yep, I trust my teacher. I'm going to I'm going to get to lesson three, and then lesson two will fill in later. Um, and um, Kind of, kind of what you see here, right? I mean, Jesus could obviously, you know, back this up and start teaching at a, a lower grade level, but he doesn't choose to, right? He wants, he wants them to believe, but they see the miracles, they, they, they hear his preaching. He wants them to, to take that leap of faith. Um, and again, I, you know, why would Jesus do that? I, I think he knows that's. That's the best way. I mean, if you want faith, faith that holds firmly to his promises, he's going to teach this way. And uh, it's, a little, it's a little challenging. Right? If, you're going to, if you're going to walk out of the classroom and say, this is, this is not right and this is too hard, well, Jesus is kind of, kind of implying you weren't going to stay in the classroom anyway. Um, anyway, that was just sort of my reflection on that, on that section and just thinking in general about Jesus' teaching. <laughs> Uh, do you have any thoughts or questions before we dig into the text in our, our worksheet? Um, quite, quite a few things said. Anything, if it was confusing or, boy, you thought that was interesting? I, <clears throat> yeah, Bob. Um, if somebody said these things about my father, my dad, you know, I'd be pretty defensive. Yeah, I wonder how much of that is that, or are they just trying to not believe in what he's telling them? So, so you think, so who's being defensive? I, I guess I'm not following exactly. Well, <clears throat> they are, because he's saying bad things about their father, their earthly father. Okay. So... I mean, there's so there's there's it, it kind of comes out of the blue, I suppose, if you're a, a New Testament reader in in you know from America, you're like, well, they're talking about Abraham really a lot, and and I think maybe we can we can lose that sometimes that um, Ab Abraham was continually on their mind, um, I, and I tried to find 
find one of my books and have some quotes on this. I couldn't find it, but I've read about this again where, like, man, what, what could you compare it to? I mean, maybe back in America when, when you were a son of a freed person or, you know, you, you really would hang on to that, you know, like, well, this, this is my father and this is our land or, you know, maybe you get some of that in like, like in some of your uh, Robin Hood movies, right? Uh, you know, the, the Jewish nation are really like, I'm Robin Bloxley, right? This is my father's land. And this is, you know, and they really have an entitlement about being children of Abraham. And they really, they really do think that um, God is, just as God blessed Abraham and gave him a kid and gave him a land and made him a great nation, they, they, they really think this is still very much in play. We are we are God's people. We are children of Abraham. I mean, we're not necessarily Isaac or Jacob, but but we're going to be blessed. And you know, the, the messianic prophecy of a of a ruler, they combine with that, right? So so when as the as the Bible starts really physical with this nation and you know, more and more become spiritual in nature, right? We find out the king is reigning on the throne, is going to be in heaven and such. Um, well, they don't go spiritual with it. They, they keep going physical, and they go, keep going earthly with it, harder and harder. And that's where that's where you get the juxtaposition here. You know, Jesus, Jesus is saying, you know, when Abraham was was alive and he was God's child, it was, it was by faith, and, and this is what God really loved. Um, you hold on to Abraham for the other part. You hold on to Abraham because because of his faith, all these blessings happen, and you think these blessings are, you know, the cat's meow. Um, so they're kind of talking past each other because for centuries the, the Jews have really, you know, they had the revolt. They kicked the Romans out uh, and the Babylonians out. You know, now they're really thinking that this is this is goes back to Abraham and. And such the blessings. So I, I did see Wayne's hand, and then I'll come back to you. I think you're right about this uh, allegory compared to what could we compare it today. I think in this country, we think of the founders, Washington, Jefferson, all those who put their neck on the line for our country. So we know that they did not do it for their personal gain. They could lose everything, including their neck. But the rulers today, are they losing their neck? How do you amass millions? And yet your people are suffering. So I think it's a very good comparison. The, Abraham gave up everything and followed the Lord. What did these Jews give up to follow the Lord? Nothing. They loved to stand on the street corner and be watched praying so that everybody would praise them. Right. You could argue that the liberty our founders talked about and tried to die for is not the liberty people are clamoring about the streets today, maybe. Right. right? You could say it's shifted. Um, and, and certainly the, the faith that Abraham had has shifted, <laughs> and now you have something very secular. So, Tom, did I answer your well, question? I was just, yeah, I agree. They're, they're totally blinded to what he's trying to tell them because they're so wrapped up in this Abraham thing. They're not even listening to what he's saying. Yeah. He, he's right. saying the same thing over and over and over again, and they're not hearing a word of it. Right. And, and so, so to fit in, for Jesus with this group, he would have to start talking about being a child of Abraham, you know, and that is very, that's very gone, isn't it? Like he doesn't, Jesus doesn't say, I am a child of Abraham and, and X, X, Y, Z. He, he starts saying, I'm, I'm a child of God, right? My God, my father's God, you know, and, and then, you know, well, who, did, who did Abraham say was his father? Abraham said his father was God. <laughs> so, Implied in this is, you know what? You know why? Why are you, why are you looking to Abraham when you when Abraham looked to God and I looked to God and and, and they don't like this at all. They don't think of, you know, I, I guess it. I guess we would do this with certain denominations or even Catholics or something, right? We would say, why why do you why do you put the Pope so high? Why don't you worship? Worship and venerate Jesus more, right? And that's maybe kind of the same conversation a little bit. You, you know, Abraham's kind of became your pope, and yeah, there were some some awesome things about him. But he, his his father should be your father too. 
right? God should be, um, you know, you, you'd be really concerned if a Catholic just pushed it all the way up to the Pope, and then that's where their faith kind of ended. Um, you know, the Pope is the filter for everything. Well, no, what, what about God? You know, and and that's really their faith and their assurance is on Abraham, and uh, why isn't it more in God? And, and that's that's the problem, right? That leads to not accepting Jesus, too. So, yes, please. My comment was going to get there, too, about the traditions in the Catholic Church and referring to the Church Fathers and to the Pope and, okay. and lesser authorities. But how many years now? It's been over 400 years since they had an active prophet in the Kingdom of Israel. How many years are we away from the Declaration of Independence? Two. Right? Or two is 20 something, right? Yeah. So. That's double the time, and think how far we've gone from our original ideals and their teaching. They're generations away from the truth. And these people that are there now, the, the, the baby of Jesus, they've been taught all these traditions and all these extra laws by their religious leader. And they are the religious leaders, some of them, who've been taught for generations, all of these things away. They're getting further and further away from the gospel, from the good news that was proclaimed throughout the Old Testament. They're a product of their generation and of their traditions, just like a lot of religions are now. They've had to change things through the years, like the people who say the world is coming to an end in whatever year. And then they have to change their prophecies. You know, if they're not based on the truth of God's words, then they get twisted and they get they get wrong ideas. Yeah, I mean, so they're, they're growing up hearing the first five books of Moses. Mm -hmm. You keep those, then you're going to be blessed like Abraham, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> and then Jesus comes and he says, "You can't keep those." And Abraham wasn't blessed because he kept them. <laughs> uh, Mind blown, right? Mind blown. Uh, that's why I picked up stones. Uh, yeah. Susan? Pastor, could you say that they were steeped in belief that they were going to be saved because they were who they were? They were a part of, of Israel, part of the promise. But here the promise is standing right before them talking to them and they can't see that and and today I think we could compare that to people wanting to belong to a church thinking that it just being a member of the church is going to save them they completely lost yeah I mean people are some of this going on here people yeah and I think you know what we have to always understand that you know, people is we are we're consistently inconsistent yeah. right so they, they, they're, on one hand, they're trying to keep the law, and they're kidding themselves that they're keeping the law perfectly or good enough to get to glory, right? Um, but when that doesn't work, you can see them saying, well, we're children of Abraham, so I think we're fine anyway, right? Um, in today's <laughs> terminology, you might have someone saying, well, I try my best, but when I don't try my best, I at least go to church or I'm a member of St. Peter, <laughs> you know? And, and you, you, see, you see grace taken out of that equation, right? People are bouncing back and forth between good works and, you know, I, I'm made in the image of God, so of course God's going to save me, right? They bounce back between some truths, but then they, they twist those truths or twist those words to, yeah, try and find comfort in them. Right? Well, there's only really comfort and grace and, and free forgiveness. Uh, and yet so, they couldn't see it, and they were right there listening. <clears throat> right. So, so, so Jesus runs into the, the Pharisee that thinks, I'm going to heaven because I've earned eternal life. I love my neighbor as myself. And Jesus smacks that down. And then he runs into these other people that think, well, why do we have to even worry about being perfect? we got Abraham. And he smacks that down. Um, 
Yeah, Bob. I was just going to say, if you ignore all the prophets and the prophecies of, of the resurrection, this, what we just read, sure makes it clear where we're headed here. Right. They've got stones in their hands and he's slipping away. I mean, mm -hmm. you, this is, you know, it's pretty clear what's going to go happen here. Yeah. Yeah, we, we, Jesus, yeah, Jesus slips away. We're not, we're not told how, how that actually works out. You know, sometimes people are blinded. Sometimes Jesus might just appear or disappear. Um, we kind of we had that conversation too when he was walking on water. How did he how did he get to the middle of the lake? Did he walk him out of the whole way? Who knows? <laughs> but but yeah, they want to kill him, and it's not his time. So, um, and I think back is it the beginning of chapter eight? This is this is why he didn't want to go with his brothers and his family to the feast because he knew they were going to be looking for him, and he still went anyway. Um, but yeah, here here it is. Um, at, at, at a certain point, they don't care if the crowd still likes them. They're, they're still going to pick up stones, and they're overwhelmed with rage. So, Okay, uh, question one. What words of condemnation in this discourse are spoken to the Jews who have believed him? Uh, so, they had believed him, but now it seems like they're... They're struggling with something. What what is his condemnation? Sit down. It's kind of a kind of right there, that first paragraph. You you would be free, but you're not, right? Um so that, that starts the whole slave conversation. Uh, well, we're not slaves. What are you talking about? Um, so they were free. They were trusting in him, believing in God. And then and now they've turned back. So and, and there's just this the dichotomy. I mean, what is, what is freedom and what is slavery? What do those represent? They, they don't get this, but we get this, I guess. Yeah. The law and the gospel. Okay. They're slaves to the law, the written words of the, of the Old Testament. In fact, most of the things that Jesus was there to cancel or fulfill, uh, the prophecies, the ceremonial laws that all pointed ahead, they were so focused on the details of those and some that had been added that they didn't see the fulfillment <clears throat> right in front of them. So I think at, on one level we could say Jesus Jesus's teachings are, are the gospel, uh, which which should include the law understood correctly, right? But they're they're writing the law. I I thought of another way of splitting this: slavery, you're a slave or you're free. I mean, we could even do it with people today that are believers and unbelievers. Why are believers free and and unbelievers slaves? I'll, I'll, I'll say I'll say they're slaves. They're slaves. They're slaves to sin. So there is that that truth in the Bible, right? When you when you sin, you are a slave to sin. Um, I I was thinking on the lines even of like truth and lies, right? So so Jesus comes to speak the truth. They, they are set free by the truth, right? Um, but when they don't listen to Jesus, they are believing lies, and they are they're still in their sin, right? They're they're still in the law. They they so slavery is is living and following the lies of this world or their sinful nature. Um, so maybe maybe even at a bedrock level, you know, how how does the the gospel set you free? Um, well, it's it's freedom because it's the truth, and, and, and the lies are would condemn me. Yeah. Um, yeah. So then he kind of makes a point there. You know, if you're 
But if you're living in these lies, you're a slave to sin, verse 34, and you know you're not in the family, right? <laughs> so if you listen to the if you don't listen to, to these teachings of mine, you're not in the family. Um, I don't care what you think about Abraham. Uh, and and they could um, they could genetically trace their lineage back, right? So we had even even Mary and Joseph, right? We learned they are from the line of David, right? And, and how many years does Mary and Joseph go back in their lineage to, to David? A thousand years. Um, they they knew they knew their lineage. Um, some Asian countries are very good about this. Uh, I guess we're getting a little bit better, but yeah. So they, you're not Abraham's descendants, even though you think you are. Um, anyway, um, question two then. So so who did the Jews consider their father, and who did Jesus say was their real father? Susan. Well, they thought that their father was Abraham, um, and Jesus is referring to God, the Father. But Jesus said their real, but their real father, who was their real father? It, it should have been, it should have been God, but it was Satan. Oh, right? okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. So, take out Abraham, put in the devil. And then you got your equation right, is what Jesus says to them. Verse 44. Yeah, uh, you belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desire. Right? So, so, so again, this idea of Abraham would not reject me because Abraham was waiting for me. And he saw my day coming. Right? He, he knew salvation was coming. But, but if you're doing the will... If, if you're doing the will of anybody and you want to call that person your father, that's the devil. Because right? he, he's been lying and he's been manipulating the truth that God has spoken since the beginning. Um, yeah, and you get that phrase there, you've, you're probably familiar with. Jesus gives, gives the devil the title, the father of lies. Uh, makes a lot of sense, right? Because... He tempted Adam and Eve with his lies and deceit. Um, also, just another beautiful tie into Genesis. Right? Genesis is everywhere. Uh, thought or comments? Wait, yeah. Well, the whole thing is a batch of lies, like the devil, who the Lord says is a murderer. Also, if they really. <coughs> claim who they thought they were, that they'd say, okay, we don't believe you, and walk away. But no, they're trying to kill him. He tells them the truth. But then finally they do show they're trying to kill him. And so, because how dare you attack our personalities? And our self-aggrandizement is everything. It's all ruled around into me. Plus the lie that you can be perfect, that and get into heaven, you can. Plus the lie that God will just let everybody come on in, no matter what, which is a lie. So it's just a series of lies. But the worst lie to them was, "How dare you speak against us?" You stand on right. the street corners. That really was the worst lie that you triggered, and showed they are trying to. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. He says, says the devil is a murderer from the beginning. Uh, yeah. So even seeing seeing him coming after Adam and Eve as as a just seeing it blatantly, he, he was trying to murder them. Right? He well, was trying to take them to hell. The Bible says if you hate anybody, you're a murderer. And he hates God. The devil hates God. Yeah. And he certainly hates Jesus. And he hates us too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if only if only the the world saw the devil as a murderer, right? And he's out. He's he's still out there, right? I mean, he's he's still still trying to, to murder. So, um, 
Three, uh, so Abraham rejoiced in looking ahead to Jesus' day and was glad when he saw it by faith. Why did this make Abraham free? Because he believed the promises and that was his faith. Jesus right. was the fulfillment of those promises. We're saved by what he did. Abraham was saved by what he came to do. Yeah. By what Jesus came to do. Abraham did not. Abraham did not go home and recite the Torah and and, and feel joy about that and as as they would have. Right? He was. He knew God was going to give a sacrifice for for sins and it was going to be the seed of the woman. And yeah. So why why they paint they, why they revisioned Abraham into a perfect little Pharisee? Jesus says you should, don't do that. Right. You, um, again, revisionist history as uh, something we're familiar with, and that's what they, they did with Abraham. No, he's, he was not like that. Um, four, uh, why, did, why did the Jews pick up stones to throw at Jesus? Probably some text in that Old Testament where he stoned them. Hang up. Yeah. Um, I agree. I, I don't have the reference in my notes there, but yeah. So this this would go back to you know false prophets, someone even claiming to be God. Um, yeah. You, you, you would you would you would kill them and. Um, again, we can we can understand this that that God would say this, but God isn't saying this about Jesus. Uh, so why why does Jesus do the miracles he does? <laughs> it's to prove that he shouldn't be stoned, right? He, he's he's been proving all along that he is God, um, and so the comment I am. I refer to it as the mic drop. That's uh, that's the moment that they're saying, "Okay, he's definitely equating himself uh, to to being God." And uh, yeah, so, we'll find, and, Pastor, yeah, we'll found the. Passage. It's Leviticus oh, twenty four sixteen. Anyone who blasphemes the name of the Lord must be put to death. The entire assembly must stone him. Yeah. Whether an alien or native born, when he blasphemes the name, and that's God. He must be put to death. Yeah. So, so now you understand blaspheming is saying this is what God says when God does not say it, right? Is that kind of same definition you've learned? Um, now, again, kind of back to the stoning of prostitutes as well. We don't. Don't know if this was something that has happened in hundreds of years or ever, but they they would have they would have yeah Moses's word on that that that's what God said. Um, so kind of I would have, I was always kind of vision those 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 threats <coughs> or those those warnings as like the copyrights on those old VHSs like if you. If you record this illegally, you're going to get a hundred eighty thousand dollar fine. I, I don't know if anybody's ever gotten the hundred eighty thousand dollar fine for bootlegging, you know, Raiders of the Lost Ark. But um, yeah, it's out there, right? It's it is what God said. It's the law. Um, so I don't know. We all all probably be penniless if we got fined for stubbing VHSs. I don't know. Maybe you guys are better than my parents were. There, there was a fine if you removed a tag off your mattress. Uh, yeah, yeah, my, yeah, my, yeah, my daughter just yeah, my daughter just got a pillow from Target that had one of those tags. Only removed by the owner. Yeah, like, like the, the non-owner removed the tag. The cops are here. The cops are here. We were moving. Oh, Bob had his hand up in the yeah. I'm just saying that's higher crime than speeding by a Lutheran high school. <laughs> <laughs> well, the funny thing was he asked me if I was drinking. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and, I, and, I, and I chuckled. And I, got, 
I, I tried not to laugh in his face because I, I, I was at a high school. <laughs> like, I don't know. I, I thought I told you I was at a high school. Let me ask me if I was drinking. <laughs> but any, anyway. You know, that you, you know how you leave the high school, you hit the parking lot, and you go out. You know. <laughs> You know, what is it? It's not the 60s, Wayne. Mm -hmm. You're drinking at the high school. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you got to be careful where you carry the communion wine in your car. <laughs> so where are you drinking or not? Oh, sure, sure. You know, I did have the... <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 no. It's, oh, yeah, it's hilarious. Yeah, no, because this morning my, my daughter gets in the backseat of my car and she's like, Oh, can you get this out of here? And I'm like, Oh, that's the jug of communion wine because I take it. Here. <laughs> so he probably did see yeah. a gallon of Morgan David in my backseat. <laughs> 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 Those Wisconsin cops. I until when he got back to the No, no. He said, "Are you been drinking?" I said, "I have a, I have a, a closed container of Mountain Dew right here." And he said, "Oh, sometimes people use Mountain Dew to mass alcohol." <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, "Well, I didn't even drink it." But anyway, he probably didn't see the gallon of wine. <laughs> but that was weird. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, anyway, God, God bless him. I, I told him God bless you after he gave me a warning. So. And I like to think I would have told him that even if he gave me. Yes. Yeah. Did you tell him you were a pastor? I didn't. No, I didn't, I didn't feel like. Pull yeah, pulling the pastor card. <laughs> <laughs> but, He's gonna be watching. Like, I was trying to bless the high school. <laughs> <laughs> my, my my uncle always told me I could drive whatever speed I wanted as long as I was willing to pay the ticket. And and my wife, I told my wife that she's like, you know, that's terrible advice because you can say that about anything. <laughs> do anything as long as you're willing to pay the, the crime and go to jail. <laughs> anyway, anyway, Margaret, I, I'm sorry. You had to steal the show. But that was a good show. Yeah. Um, I was thinking when I read this too, how much these Pharisees are like children. When their words don't make any impact, they haul off and hit somebody. <laughs> oh, right, right, right. When you when you lose when you lose the argument, you start you start throwing things, right? Yeah. And you start getting mad and and uh, frustrated. Yeah, I definitely I definitely see that there, right? When someone knows they're in the wrong, they pick up stones. I mean, anyway, and, oh, you know, and I think when Jesus was confronted with an individual, you know, in a conversation, it was one thing, but when he when he got with a group or a crowd. Then the crowd built on this emotions, both good and bad. I mean, they you know, they would get a crowd and they would say, "Okay, let's stone them or let's crucify them." You know, but I I think a one on one, Jesus was overpowering to to an individual. Mob mentality. Mob mentality. Well, apply if we haven't already. Mm -hmm. The Jewish leaders thought that Abraham was their ticket to heaven. Today, some people pin their hopes on confirmation or church membership. Why is that so dangerous? <clears throat> really, really no difference, right? If, if we look, if people think, well, I'm a member of this church, or I've been confirmed, or I was... I was even baptized as my, my ticket to heaven. Um, go to church every Sunday. Right. It's it's comforting. And they are truths, right? I mean, there's if God adopts you into your family, you are you are his child. Right? And if you confess Jesus before man, Jesus will confess you before your father in heaven. Um that's what confirmation and church membership is. Um, church membership keeps the Sabbath day holy, right? I'm in God's word and I, I worship Him. Uh, but again, yeah, these just become our our 
our New Testament Mosaic laws, then then we're in trouble. Uh, those are those those are lies the devil will tell us if, if, if those are or why we're going to be saved. It's by it's going to be by grace, grace that we confess, grace that we're watched, grace that we're praising God. So I think that goes back to the very first. Um, Verse on 31, it says, if you continue in my word. It's just not be converted, but to continue. Yeah. Who, who is it that teaches once saved, always saved? Baptists. Baptists. I had a girl leave our school, and um, they went to a Baptist school, and my visiting the mother later, she said, well, over there they told her that she couldn't fall for faith. Now, that was in no, Now, not every Baptist is the same. There's a, that's a certain branch of Baptist. I would say they're the smaller, smaller branch. Where does, where does it even come up before that? He was a contemporary of Luther. His name was... Calvin, so so um, the Calvinists, which bleeds in into um, Baptist modern day Baptist day, that Calvin taught that once saved, always saved, and and Lutherans mockingly, I think, we mockingly say the frozen chosen that well now that they've been baptized or they're, they're going to heaven. That's so there are. So there are there, that Calvinist thought is still out there that Luther fought against, and but it's still very much alive. And, and some uh, conservative Baptists, like it really, really, you know, if you if you if I didn't tell you their preacher was Baptist, uh, you might think they were Luther because they're because they have a lot of things the same or similar, but but this idea of election and the sacraments are going to be off. But they'll, they'll have a high view of the Bible, right? Um, you can probably go with a Calvinist through the Creation Museum and have a really good time together until you, you talk about a few things like like that. But, um, oh, yeah, another, another thought there, Naomi? Oh, just a comment. I, I've been reading a book by D. James Kennedy, and he says, those who fall away never were real Christians anyway. What do you think of that? <laughs> that's, a, that's, that's a Calvinist thought, yeah. Mm. Yeah, so um, the, the problem, the, 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 one of the big problems, and I always think about it, is you, 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 the sower spreads the seed, right? The seed is the word, and, and it, it, God blesses it, and it grows, and we don't always understand and how or when. Um, it's almost as if to say, when I share the word to a person that's chosen, then I give them a good seed, and it's a powerful seed. But then when I share it with a person that isn't chosen, it's like a bad seed. And, and we'd say, no, when we share God's word to an assembly of people, we, we don't, we know the soil is different but there's nothing in the Bible that tells us one soil is impossible, right? Or, or the seed works for some and not for others, right? The Holy Spirit is 100% the Holy Spirit through the work that's being taught. And the Holy Spirit can work in anybody's heart. And we, and we pray that it does. Um, but we would not say people are predisposed. It's not like the, they're... they're our heart was sprayed with Roundup, and then we, spiritual Roundup, and then we tried to plant something there. That, that's kind of what the Calvinists think. The Calvinists kind of think, you know, Wausau's been sprayed with Roundup, no one's going to come to faith there. So, so it's almost, yeah, it, so it's really, it, you know, it's really unfortunate that you, you work that out to its logical conclusion, you start, you start writing people off, saying, well, they were just never going to believe anyway, or, and that's not how that's not how Jesus preached and, and taught. Um, you know, I, I just taught the lesson of uh, how to, how can a rich person get to heaven? And Jesus says, and the disciples say that seems impossible. A camel can't go through an eye of a needle. And Jesus told them, Well, with God, anything's possible. Right? 
even 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 the, the young rich ruler could get to heaven. Um, he doesn't say the opposite, right? He doesn't say, "Well, <laughs> you should have known the rich guy wasn't going to believe anyway, so let's just move on to find some poor people," right? I mean, that's not that's not the conversation. Um, so. It, it, Anyway, yeah, you're probably reading a really excellent book, but then you, you found that you found that that tinge of Calvinism and, and such. So, yeah. Well, yeah, and then in, in the epistles somewhere it says, "Hold fast to what you have, that no one takes your crown." And then it has, also adds, comfortingly, in a different place, uh, uh, that God holds us in the palm of His hand, and no one can remove you from God's mercy. Oh, okay, so so, so the, the opposite of it is true, and that's why it's also a wrong teaching, too. So it just says the ground isn't pre-sprayed with Roundup, and some people are impossible. People that do come to faith don't live in an incubator where they're never going to have a bad day, or, or a deer can't come and eat up the leaves on their plant, right? I mean, you know, we, we are very much chosen by God, but we know that we have to continue in the Word. We, we have to be steadfast because... Oh, the devil is still working on us. Like, so, so the devil doesn't look at people and say, don't have to tempt them anymore. They'll never believe. And can't, can't bother with them because they're the, they're the frozen chosen and they'll never fall away. I mean, so, so if the devil doesn't look at fate that way, why would we, right? I mean, it would be, it would be ridiculous to say we know more about faith and how it's lost or gained than the devil. Uh, the devil, the devil is certainly saying, "I've got these people in my pocket. I'm going to keep trying and working, keeping them there." And the devil says, "Those people are not in my pocket. I want to tempt them when I, when I can, or how I can." Um, so, so yeah, good examples and, and, and thoughts there. You would say, "Yeah, it's dangerous to think that hey, I'm fine. I got my membership or such." Uh, good comments. Any? Other thoughts? In, in Calvinism, they call it the tulip, and this is the I we're talking about. So, uh, irresistible grace. So they would they would say for some people, uh, they can't resist it. Um, I believe it's the I. Um, Five, six, then. Uh, why do people in the world today trust in lies rather than Jesus? Let's break this apart. Yeah, let's do that one first. Why, why do they... Why would people rather trust in lies than Jesus? Margaret? They have hardened hearts. Or they have hardened their hearts. Okay. So they don't... They, they, they don't want to hear the truth. From, from God? Yeah, Denise? Because it's easier. It's yeah. easier or? They don't want to have to do anything. Yeah, they don't have to, don't have to work. Yeah, they easier. Don't have to work for don't yeah. have to. I'm sorry. That's fine. It's, it's just. You can do your own thing. Right. You can be your own person. You can do what you want to do. Not what, what God wants you to do. Yeah, yeah. So. So, so it's easier and I'd say more comfortable, right? So it's, maybe it's easier to say, well, God is loving and I'm going to be fine. I, you know, I, I went to church on Easter. Uh, but maybe and to, to, to say, well, maybe where it's not more easier would be if you're really trying to keep the commandments and the laws. Uh, even if it's not easier, it could be more comfortable. Like, well, that's what I'm used to, right? Right. You know, I was visiting a shut-in yesterday, and you know, right there on on their weekly schedule, there's priest so and so coming, and or so and so coming, and they got they got the rosary, you know, at three thirty. And um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't. Maybe some people would say it's easy. I, I would, I but I would say, you know, a lot of people are conditioned. I think that's very comfortable, right? Like these are these are commands. This is a something that I'm told to do, so I'm comfortable doing it. Um, so, yeah, so, so lies can be easier. Lies can be more comfortable. You're used to them. Um, 
Why, why do you call Christians religious? And why do they call Christians religious fanatics or even demon possessed? So why, why would people call us names today? Margaret? I have a daughter-in-law who turned against me over my religion. And it seems that once she said that, a dam broke. And she spoke of all kinds of things. For instance, she and my son came to the church we attended earlier um, in another town. And they sang. They wanted to use this big echoey place to practice singing. My son is a confirmed Lutheran. I didn't think anything of it at the time. They wanted to practice for something they were doing with their choir elsewhere. She said, all you people with your noses in the air, you think you're better than everybody else. <clears throat> you have to keep separate from everybody else. You won't go to our church and pray with us. There are <clears throat> feelings that people have. Maybe they don't understand them any better than I do, but they shut doors. And another daughter-in-law, who is no longer a daughter-in-law, took confirmation class to marry my son. But she didn't accept it in her heart. She kept it away from the children. The books I had sent out there to California for the children, Bible story books and such, when they divorced, she sent me all the books. I don't believe those children ever had their sticky fingers on a single one of those books. They were all just brand new. And I gave them to a different grandchild. But there are people who just simply want to hold themselves to themselves. They don't want to open their eyes to see the love. And even if they've known it, they reject it afterwards. And that's the, the seed that falls into the weeds. The weeds overpower it. And it's very, very sad. I talked to one of our oldest members who said, I raised my children that way and they are no longer active believers. I don't know what's in their hearts. The Lord will judge that. It's not uncommon. I bet you there's a lot of families who have close or distant relatives who've rejected God's word. And between Myron and I, we have 10 kids. If you judge by their fruits, they're probably not all going to be with us in heaven. This is a, a, a real grief. But people have all their own reasons. They want to trust in their own reason. Yeah, and I, I, I think I hear what, hear you saying through that too. And you can kind of correct me if I'm wrong, but you know, if, if you think about how the the devil wanted Adam and Eve to look at God as unloving and judgmental, mm -hmm. right? He looks down on you, and he doesn't love you like you think he does. Um, that 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 lie, it trickles down to believers, it trickles down to you and me, where people will look at us and say, well, yes, you, you say you're a loving person, and you say you're a Christian, but I don't think you're really as loving uh, or understanding. And, and, um, and, then, and then, of course, along with that is, well, you're judgmental because you think you have the truth and everybody else doesn't. And... And then they'll, they'll pick out things, right? They'll say, well, you didn't go to this, this wedding or you won't come to my church. And, and um, really, that's, that's kind of the same thing Jesus is dealing with here, right? You know, they're saying, Jesus, you're judgmental. And you're not, you know, you're, you're saying you know God and you know our ancestry better than we do. And, and certainly, they, they totally bought into the idea that Jesus doesn't love them. Um, you know, the, the loving God that says they're going to be a special nation didn't send us you because you're not loving us like that. Um, it's called love me, love my lifestyle. Yeah, I, you know, they're, so again, right, and you speak out in, in truth and love it doesn't mean people hear you speaking the truth or they think you're loving, right? And that's, that's a difficulty, so. 
Anyway, I and you had great examples of that, right? That you shared those, so I appreciate that. Uh, we are at time. Uh, for our closing, we sing. Uh, God's, God's word is our great heritage. Which is not great. God's word is our great heritage and shall be ours forever to spread its light from age to age. Shall be our chief endeavor through life it guides our way in death it is our stay Lord grant while worlds endure we keep its teachings pure throughout all generations Amen have a safe trip home and don't speed through Cronin water. <laughs> 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 Put in the trunk. They got the lights on all the time.